Shaddai, glory to God. He'll supply and meet every need exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or even think. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's the God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, somebody give the Lord a shout. Now, I said a shout. I expected a Pentecostal shout. So give him a shout. That's better. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good to have you all this morning. Welcome to Expedition Church. This is our fifth Sunday in the building. Hallelujah. We're one month in the bank and starting on uh, month two. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, um, we no longer owe what we owed when we moved in. <laughs> Our first payment has been made. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And uh, we're just excited. Um, you know, updating, you know, the lights are supposed to come in sometime, hopefully in the next, this week for uh, outside the parking lot, light it up better with uh, new floodlights and a street light out at the street. <laughs> so you see how to get in. <laughs> it's dark. I mean, it's dark out there. And uh, we're, we're going to rectify We're rectifying that. The doors have another three weeks to come in and then one or two weeks to have them installed. So we're looking mid-April, trusting by by Easter, we'll have our new doors in. Hallelujah. That's what we're hoping for. 
Um, we can't control that. That had to be ordered in COVID. Supply chain um, issues because of COVID. Guys said they used to be able to order that order, those doors and have them there the next day. Drop ship them overnight. And now it's, it's a three to four week lead time just to get them in. So, but we're, it's coming. It's coming. And uh, so is the landscaping day. <clears throat> Eventually, we're going to have a landscape today where we come out and we, we do stuff around the building to get it, you know, get it taken care of and get that mulching border down and get some low level, slow growing shrubbery. We don't want stuff going up the building, you know. You know, you get, you get junipers and you put them in and, you know, and oh, they're so pretty when you put them in. Then, you know, three years later, they're at the top of your building and you're like, where's the building? That won't be what gets out there. All right. Hallelujah. Don't forget Tuesday night prayer. It's a Zoom prayer meeting. Um, it is a virtual prayer meeting. And then Wednesday night Bible study here live and in person. We have about um, 13 more lessons, 13 or 14 more lessons on the Bible in the light of our redemption. So that should take us right up to the beginning of the summer. And uh, uh, I'm enjoying doing it. I hope you're enjoying hearing it. And, and, and be any minister to. Praise God. Amen. Um, before we see this morning's offering, we wanted to present to you, we're asking, um, just like we did when we got out of debt, that um, we get people to commit to a, an extra $100 a month. And I mean, maybe it's too much for some families or some people. So, but if you give 25 and three other people give 25 a month, that equals that 100 unit. Okay. If you're already giving money to the building fund, and you know that we're not asking you to double up or anything, uh, what we're doing is we're, we're endeavoring to come to a point where the it's moving in and the expenses increase, and we're trying to you know get the budget balanced to how it flows um, to have that extra money there to help us get through that settling in stage, okay. Um, so then, so if you commit to that, we've already got something to say, well, I'm going to commit starting on such, such day, whatever. Great. Uh, all we ask you to do is when you do that, make sure you mark, mark it that we're giving to the building fund uh, doohickey. Okay. And um, that, that'll help us get through these initial months of you know, trying to determine how much our expenditures will be on, a, you know, on an average basis. Uh, we have no idea what the electricity is going to be, what the gas is going to be, what, you know, um, until we start getting bills. And um, we haven't had that in six years because we were nomads. And then, you know, we don't have the, the mortgage will be, but the other stuff, those other things that are going on and continuing to finish setting up camp here and um, building a storage unit on property. That's one, that's the only thing we need to do. But anyway, that's a coming. Amen. How many, how many have any uh, construction bones in your body? Joe, okay. How many? How many don't mind holding wood while someone else nails it? Okay. All right. Okay. If you're doing it, I don't know. I could tell you stories. I did shoot a finishing, I mean, a framing nail into the palm of my hand with a nail gun one time. I was, I was holding outside to, uh, to get stuff ready to set a window in, and it caught the safety, but the actual nail part was outside the two by four. And so when I pulled the trigger, it just went, shunk! Four inches right in the, I went, ah! And so, I mean, I'm, I feel like Jesus. <laughs> uh, and then, then one time I had my finger, I was, I was using a, a finish nailer to retach a spindle on my deck, and it hit a piece of wood, a knot, and it dipped. And I went, ow, that stung. And I pressed it. Blood came out over here, and blood came out over here. It had gone all the way through. <laughs> like, ow! So now who can hold wood while I do work? <laughs> Not one hand went up. Thank you, Nathan. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, 
Y'all behave yourself. Thank you, son. You're a lot of help on those issues. God will forgive you. I'm thinking about it. Amen. I'm messing with you, buddy. All right. It's t it is time to give. You're not from envelope. They are on the seat backs in front of you. Uh, if there's not one available and you need one, raise your hand, Brother Joe. I'll get you one. But um, they're uh, they're out there right in front of you. Um, praise God. This is for general tithes and offering. And if you have a building fund, you can just circle that on there and put that in there. Um, praise the Lord. And um, we'll take care of it. If you use the Cash App or, or uh, PayPal, you can go ahead and, and ring that up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said to give and it shall be given unto you. Anybody know how? Shall you have a tree in your backyard that grows bunny leaves? No. Shall men give into your bosom? Amen. There's, there's, there are spiritual laws concerning giving. God just doesn't, God just don't show up in your yard with a, with a million dollars he counterfeited in heaven to put it on your front porch. Amen. Okay. It is, it's given to you and, and he uses this world system and he causes things to be in your favor and to come into your hands. As we said, I still cannot trace effectively how all the money came in when we got out of debt three years ago. I'm still, I'm still baffled by it, but it just kept showing up and kept showing up and and then when I look at how the bank, uh, the money went last year and getting in position to buy a building, how the money just kept coming in, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like, where? But it's there. Amen. It just kept, it kept coming. And it was, God was using people, but it was just, you just kind of went, you know? So anyway, and, and I'll be honest with you, about everything that you, you go to some seminar and hear about, you know, giving and church growth as far as, you know, you've got to have this many... None of it applied. Okay? God did, God did some stuff. And so we just we trust God to be a supernatural provider and to use people and to work through them and to do his work. Amen? Our, our goal and our faith is out there paying this building off in three years and then build the new building. Hallelujah. And have that paid off within, have that paid off within 10 years of now. Not, so seven more years have that paid off. Amen. And we may bring that back down in a couple of years once we get there. And just keep right on going. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Everybody ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithers and the givers. We thank you that your word is clear. That as we bring the tithe into the storehouse, that you open up the windows of heaven and that you empty out on us blessings we don't have room enough to receive. So we thank you we're a delightsome land. We lend to many and don't borrow. There is no, um, the, um, the devourer is rebuked for our sake. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, the, and we walk in the land of overflow and prosperity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. Now, if you're, if you're sitting somewhere and you got an envelope and he doesn't see you, you kind of you know, wave at him. Praise God so that he knows it. Praise be to God forevermore. All right, Children's Church, you guys are dismissed. Kind of, kind of upper Children's Church mainly. Hallelujah. And we're listen. It's, it's all coming, guys. New building, bigger, bigger. Um, I mean, we just got into this one, Pastor. Yeah, but we're just not going to stop there. This wasn't the end all. This was the beginning. And I mean, remember. We've been praying. This was the beginning. It wasn't the end. Getting in here and having our own location and stuff in our land, five acres, was the beginning of having the opportunity to do everything God called us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not, this isn't the finish line. This is the starting line, really. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise God. Praise God. Over here in 1958, I mean, you had, you had 60 traveling ministers that had healing major ministry that had tents going all over the country, uh, having healing miracle rallies. Uh, Brother Gordon Lindsay of Christ for Nations down in Texas, Dallas, Texas, uh, his magazine, um, oh gosh, just went totally blank. It's called Christ for the Nations now. It was called the, uh, the Healing Something back then. 
Um, huh? Not the healing evangel. Um, I forgot what they called it. Huh? Voice of healing. Thank you. Thank you. The voice of healing. All the tra major traveling uh, ministries of, that, that, laid, that ministered to the sick advertised in the voice of healing. And they'd have crowds come out all over the country. I mean, Brother Roberts tent held 20,000 people. Jack Coe added on 2,000 people to his tent and called up Brother Roberts and said, my tent's bigger than yours. He's at 22,000. This is the 50s, folks. And you go back and get, and get the, the uh, like from the Pentecostal Evangel and things like that and get the magazine, get the testimonies of the things that took place in those meetings. And I am telling you, there were, whoo. You look up A.A. A. Allen and the um, the Miracle Baby. That one will give you chills. I mean, I mean, the chills run up down your spine. Baby came with no eyes, uh, deformed. I mean, bones were all deformed. And right there in front of all of them, the bones started cracking. The eyes started swirling in the socket. And eyes appeared. The baby could see, could hear, could talk. Bones all straightened out. I don't believe that. That's your problem. You don't believe it. Hello? We know God can marvelously heal. But, there's always a but. He doesn't do it today. That all passed away the day the last apostle died. You're an idiot. I don't know what else to call you. The Bible said I can't call you a fool, so I'll call you an idiot. All right? And he goes on and says here, um, you know, every plague. And then he goes over to Exodus chapter 15 and states uh, that I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha. Okay, Exodus 15, 26. You know somebody's been using scripture when you jump all over it. Verse 26, uh, And if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do right which is in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I will put or allow none of these diseases which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am. God said, I am. God is never the great God I was. God is a God I am. <clears throat> when he sent Moses to tell Abra uh, Air, uh, Pharaoh, that he was coming, he said, who shall I tell Pharaoh that's who sent me? He said, tell him that I am that I am sent you. Yeah. Literally, I am because I am in the Hebrew. Literally, I am because I am. I just exist. And, you know, actually, literally, literally. I exist because I exist. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just tell, and the reason he told him that was because Pharaoh had pretended and they made an imagery out so that all the people thought Pharaoh was eternal because when one Pharaoh died, the next Pharaoh took over, they were dressed exactly like the same kind of makeup and dress, and the people thought he was a deity because he never died. But God said, go tell him the one that exists because he exists sent you. And then he proved it. All the plagues were plagues against the gods of Egypt. Every plague that came was a plague against what their, their gods were. God showing he was the God of, God of all. Amen. But he said, I am, I am Jehovah Rapha. And we see Jesus coming into the earth, <clears throat> who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 10. I believe verse 38. Now look at this. How God, now remember this. Jesus came and said, I only do the things I see my father do. Hebrews declares him as the outshining of his glory. The, the King James says express image of his person. Okay. Um, you know, more modern language, the outshining of his glory. Everything Jesus did was a representation of the will of the Father. 
And so I like to ask people who are into the God put it on your teacher lesson, how many accounts do we have in the ministry of Jesus of somebody coming to him that was well and Jesus going up to him and putting blindness on him and saying, uh, you need to learn a lesson. The only time we can come even close to that in the New Testament is when the, um, the um, deputy of a, a leader we tried to withstand Paul in preaching the gospel, and a mist came on him. And he, was, he couldn't see, and he went about looking for somebody to help, uh, help guide him. And it was only for a short time. But he was trying to stop the gospel from being preached. Hello? God just encountered him and said, stop. There was no Christian believer getting taught a lesson. We don't have anybody, we don't have anybody going to Jesus, finding some normal person and going, be blind. Not one account. So Jesus said to Philip, show us the Father and it suffices us. So that's King Jimmy for sufficient. I get tongue-tied doing King Jimmy sometimes. All right. Show us the Father and it is, it's sufficient for us. And Jesus looks at him and says, have I been with you this long and you don't get it yet? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do Ed Taylor version here. <laughs> Philip, I've been, we've been together for a few years now and you don't get it yet? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then he told him in another place, he said, um, don't you know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? And if you don't believe it that way, just believe it for the very works sake. The works that he did were a testimony that he was one and equal with the Father. What did Jesus do? Well, I can't find any places where he made him sick. I can't even find places where he made him poor. Well, he told, he told uh, um, the rich man to go sell all that he had and give to the poor and come and follow him. Yeah, he was about to establish him and make him richer than he ever thought about being. But it wasn't going to be because of his hard work. It was going to be because he had sown into the kingdom of God. Because the laws of prosperity, you give and it shall be given unto you. He went to get his heart with God and learn how to depend on God and not on himself. Hello. Jesus had a treasurer. I, I, I could, I'll, I'll just say, look, leave here, go up to Elm Street in 85. Pull up to the guy sitting on the court with his sign and ask him the name of his treasurer. I know I'm being silly and facetious, but really, <clears throat> poor people don't have treasurers, do they? I mean, they, they have whatever they get long enough to go get something with it. Y'all here, you're going home. So we know that sickness is a part of the cross, I mean, of the curse. And it went to the cross. We know that Jesus' ministry is a representation of the Father's heart. And, you know, um, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, right here in Acts 10, 38, with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good. <coughs> who went about doing good. <coughs> and healing. All who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was anointed to heal all who were oppressed of the devil. Who anointed him? God. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth <coughs> with the Holy Ghost in power. And he went about, he did good, and he healed all. But that all were oppressed of the devil. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for two. Steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. <clears throat> Stealing, killing, and destroying doesn't come from God. 
Your insurance policy is, is, is stupid. And other acts of God. God did not send a tornado to tear your trailer up. Didn't send a flood to drown your, your grandma. Stealing, killing, and destroying are acts of the enemy. Or results of a fallen, man, a fallen world. They are not the hand of God. <coughs> People came out last couple of weeks going, the Russians invading the Ukraine are the judgment of God for the corruption in their government. You know the guy that was corrupt in the government got thrown out of office two years ago? They threw him out, threw out all the government officials and replaced them because of their corruption. Now, God's not going to come back on the backside afterwards and then judge them for throwing out the corrupt guys because they were corrupt. Do what now? Oh, okay. God's not, you know, they're not judging them for that corruption. They're, the church in Ukraine is amazing. They're on fire. They're the biggest evangelists in Europe. The church of Ukraine is amazingly powerful. And they're reaching out and doing things all over the place. Amen? So everybody starts going, Ezekiel 38, it's the judgment of God. So he's going to stop the propagating of the gospel from the most evangelistic Christians in all of Europe because you had some really nasty bad dudes in government. I don't think so. Hello? They're, pray they're praying for their government. They're praying for you know, righteousness to be restored. They're praying for all kinds of stuff. Uh, and, you know, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. We get so crazy. And we're always trying to make something fit prophecy. I can tell you, every time you try to take a word of it and make it fit prophecy, you're in trouble. Just about every time. you got to wait. you got to let it play out and watch it. Everybody said Israel becoming a nation was the restoration, was the beginning of the season for the return of Christ. And, you know, he was coming back in that generation. Well, the Hebrew generation is 44 years. We're 30 years past the uh, that generation. But we all preached it. People preached it. Yeah, he's going to be back before 92. <laughs> Had to be back before 92. He didn't. Just, just let things be. Amen? Things will happen in, 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 the, in the time and the season, and you ain't going to figure it out. Well, you'll be writing some dumb book. Reason, 88 reasons Jesus is returning. I mean, 87 reasons Jesus is returning during Rosh Hashanah 1987. And he didn't. And then you would do a sequel to your book called 88 Reasons. He's returning in 88. 88 was, he didn't come in 87. And I'm not joking. That was his sequel book. Made a lot of money on him. And he didn't write 89. People figured out two strikes, that was enough for them. When he didn't even buy it. They could just go in there and write an addendum on their own, 89. He didn't come in 88 or 87. Didn't have to pay them for the whole book again. Because it was all the same stuff, except 80, 88, the reason was he didn't come in 87. Like, dear Lord. Jesus came to heal. How God, I mean, um, Jesus went about their villages preaching the gospel of the kingdom teaching in their synagogues, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen? Now, Acts 10, 38, what? He healed all the oppressed devil, for God was with him. That right there is enough to build your faith on believing in healing, and God's, God's going to heal you, and the devil's bad. Amen? Jesus bore our sickness on the cross at the same time he bore your sin. Now, Brother Hagin used to preach a sermon, and I've kind of preached it before. Uh, salvation, uh, uh, salvation and healing, God's double cure. Hallelujah. 
Isaiah chapter 53, I said, did I say 58? I meant 53. Verse 1, Lord, I mean, who hath believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. Uh, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Stop. Now let's stop it with all this stupid, silly, modern dress, bed, head, skinny, jean, tunic, top to draw people. We're going to get people in our churches. Hello? Are y'all here? You gone home? The Bible said there was no formula that will come in this that we should desire him. There was no beauty. Hello? I'm sorry, that we should des desire him. When we'll see him, there's no beauty. We should desire him. Apparently, Jesus wasn't a hunk. <laughs> you got people now going to churches because the pastor's a hunk. Or he's, you know, he's, he's got on his tunic top and his skinny jeans and his, you know, whatever shoes that they wear. Amen. Got bed head. I think we're past bed head, whatever we're doing now. What's the new thing? Man buns and then the shaved head with all the long stuff on top. The undercut. We're in the undercut. Kind of like, a, almost like putting a bowl on your head and shaving everything else and leaving the rest of it. Yeah. It ain't about how you, how cool you are in your dress. When Jesus showed up, there was no, what? No form nor comeliness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. It wasn't because he was GQ of the month. Hello? You got too many ministers trying to be GQ of the month ending up bed with Miss Pinup of the month. And yeah, I said it. We got to stop that mess. We either come in here anointed to give the word of God and we're not about us. We're about sharing Jesus or get out of the pulpit. And I said that too. And I mean it. You ain't got no business standing there trying to be Mr. Cool. Because I'm going to tell you when they're sick and they're dying and they need a miracle, your coolness ain't going to do a thing for them. Hello. I mean, I need for the pastor to come. Make sure he wears the blue tunic top. I like that one. Hello. Because if that's the reason you're going to church, that's what you're going to get. Come on. No, Jesus was not. It wasn't that he was so handsome. Everybody just, I mean, he wasn't groupies. I mean, people, Elvis would, they throw their underwear on his stage with their phone numbers in it. Their bras on the stage with their phone numbers in them. Thank you, Nathan. We just really need the extra there. And, 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 you know, uh, you know the, the, when the Beatles came out, the Beatles would come and start singing and the girls would pass out. They're so overwhelmed with whatever because they're, you know, 10 feet from a, a beetle. Ooh, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. And then they followed, they followed right on down into the drug culture they brought into the country. Thank you very much for that. Sorry, Cap. I know they're your favorite group. My favorite group could sing male or female. The BGs. Okay. He is just, listen, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Hello. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and rejected 
I mean, I'm sorry, he was despised and, and we esteemed him not. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, the Hebrew for griefs, I believe that one is, um, I believe that is um, koile. I might, there's a makab and koile, two Greek Hebrew words here. One means grief, one means pains. I mean, one means sickness, one means pain. Okay? Um, but grief, the word for grief here literally is sickness. And for pain, and for sorrows, is pain. And yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes or bruises, we were healed. <clears throat> now you're going to have people all day long come back and say, that meant the spiritual sickness, I mean, the, the, the sickness of sin, the spiritual sickness of sin. They, want, they, they are so adamantly against people being divinely healed, supernaturally healed by God, they have to make stuff up. Well, that's referring to the spiritual sickness of sin. No! I can prove it. And I'm going to prove it with the Bible. Your PhD can't prove it, what you said. Because if you go to Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, and get down to verse 16. Let's back at verse 14. We'll, we'll go ahead and do away with the Pope being celibate thing while we're at it. Let's go ahead and get it all right here. And uh, when Jesus was coming to Peter's house and saw his wife's mother, Peter had a wife. The first pope had a wife. Right there. He wants the pope. Dear Lord. But he had a wife. How can you, how do you know he had a wife? He had a mother-in-law. Got to have a wife to have one of the other things. Laid sick of a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. When the evening was come, they brought many that were possessed with devils and cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Okay. Now, wait a second now. People that he cast out, he brought many that were possessed with devils, he cast out the spirits and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, and that was the Greek form of Isaiah. Okay. The prophet saying, himself took our sickness, our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. He healed sick people in reference to Isaiah 53. It ain't talking about the spiritual sickness of sin. He healed people. Hello. And to take it one step further, 1 Peter 2.24. You turn there, I know it. <laughs> Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we be dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. Now Isaiah says R is prophecy. It's pointing to a future event. Jesus bearing our sicknesses and sins. Amen? Whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. So now we're talking about the cross. He took your sin and he took your sicknesses. There were two, there were two different things. Sin dealt with the spiritual side of man. Sickness was physical. You're not spiritually sick. You're either spiritually born again and you're spiritually dead. No in between. You're not in purgatory. You're not working it out. You don't get to go to purgatory and say, we can't work it out. We can't work it out. Don't work that way. Huh? Speaking of the Beatles, again, prove me they were wrong. 
You went there. I had to finish. Amen. And so, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by, his stripes, by whose stripes ye were healed. So what's that tell us? Healing is an accomplished fact for the believer. Amen. It also joins together with Matthew 8 and Isaiah 53 and destroys the theological narrative that it was talking about the Jews and spiritual sicknesses. The Galatians, it was written to the, actually to the, mainly to the Gentile church. Paul gone to the Gentile church by then. And uh, there is a um, theory that Hebrews was an addendum to the book of Galatians and kind of went like this. He wrote the book of Galatians and then wrote, and to the Hebrews and wrote Hebrews. And that's why he says, you see how large a letter I write. It was not because of autophamelia or whatever that eye disease was, that pussy, runny, or, you know, eye disease that Paul supposedly had. Because he said, see how large a letter I write. He had, he's so blind, he had to write one letter on each tablet. Can you imagine what it took to get that letter to the church at Galatia? People come up with all kinds of crazy stuff trying to prove that God doesn't heal today. Oh, my. He wouldn't put it up there. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I came down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. In John 14, 9, he said, have I been so long with you, Philip? You've seen me. You've seen the Father. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. God wants you well. Look at John, third John, the third letter of John. Now, I mean, if you're still in King Jimmy E's mindset, the third epistle of John, of St. John the Divine. Okay. We, we come up with some titles, baby, don't we? The elder referred to himself until the well-beloved Gaius, that was a friend of his, whom I love in the truth. This is a personal letter from John to Gaius. Beloved, I wish above all things. Now, the word wish literally is pray in the Greek. So I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Now he gives us a key here to being healed, walking in health and prosperity is soul prosperity is renewing your mind to the word of God. I said soul prosperity is renewing your mind to the word of God. Be not, Hebrews, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. So as you renew your mind to the word of God, soul prosperity takes place. Of your suke. You see, you get born again. Your pneuma gets born again. Your suke gets renewed. And it gets renewed by the engrafted Word of God. What? The Word of God is the Borg. It will assimilate you. It will add you to its collective. It will add your distinctiveness to the collective. Okay? The Word of God it engrafted. It engrafts itself into your soul. Hallelujah. And Paul and John writes to his friend and says, I pray above everything that you prosper and be in health in relationship or in a parallel um, connection to the prosperity of your soul. The more you study the word, the more you're going to prosper and be in health. Amen. Why? Because the word promises both. It's in both. The problem we run into is, well, I know brother so-and-so. Didn't anybody love the Lord more than him? And we prayed that God would heal him. If it was his will. 
and he didn't get healed. Must not have been his will. You prayed in unbelief. I said, you prayed in unbelief. Go study the ministry of Jesus and they see how many times he, he prayed or told them to pray, if it be thy will. When he got to Lazarus' tomb, he didn't go, Father, I know thou hearest me. You always hear me. Now, if it be your will, raise Lazarus up from the dead. Did he? Go study it. You'll find out he didn't say that. He said, I know you hear me. You always hear me. And then he stopped and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came out bouncing in grave clothes. He had to say, lose him and let him go. He was still wrapped up in the grave clothes. There's a whole other sermon there too. I had to preach that one one day. Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he got to uh, um, Tabitha's home where she was dead, he didn't go, well, guys, you know, I, I've come and she's dead and I'm going to ask the father to raise her up if it's his will. He get there and goes, the child's not dead. She's asleep. And they all laughed him to scorn. And then he threw them out. And he gets there and goes, damsel, if the father desires it, you'll be raised up. No, he didn't say that. He said, I say unto thee, rise. And boom, she's up. When did Jesus pray, if it be thy will? In the garden of Gethsemane. Amen. When he was in that agony of going to the cross and becoming sin and being separated from the Father, as he became sin for us who knew no sin, he said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He had to submit unto, the de unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. This is the only time we get the if it be thy will prayer. The only time. He does it three times. But it's the same prayer. And it had to do not with God doing something that he's already promised. It had to do with facing a circumstance that was so overwhelmingly difficult that he drew back from and didn't want to have to do it. And he had to consecrate to what the Father knew was the only plan for the redemption of man. Had nothing to do with healing somebody. There's not one case that somebody came to Jesus to get healed and they didn't get it. Or what about the, the Syrophoenician woman? He called her a dog. Yeah, he did. She's outside the covenant. And she came and he, he said, what do you want? She said, that my daughter would be here. He says, it's not meat or not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Well, she doesn't have a covenant right to it at this point. She doesn't have access to it. She's not in covenant. And she said, yeah, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He said, woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. And her door is made whole. He had to locate her and get her in the faith Find out by faith what she could believe for. And when he told her the dogs don't get to eat the children's bread, she said, all I need is a crumb. Woo, glory to God. All I need is a crumb. Amen. That's all it takes, praise God. Oh, yes. He said, wow, go ahead, woman, you got it. Amen. And her daughter was healed the self same hour. Are you here? I said, are you here? Yes. Glory to God. There's no, There's nowhere. I said, there's nowhere where he turned them away. Amen. That woman came in the temple. And she's bowed over. You know, I don't know if she has osteoporosis or what, but she's all bowed over. And, um, you know, she's been this way 15 years. And she comes in, and the, the, the righteous religious folks are watching to see whether or not he would heal or bust something. And he knew their thoughts. And he looks at them and says, which of you, 
if your donkey gets out and gets in a ditch, won't go loose him on the Sabbath day. And then he makes this statement. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham. Now, what's that? He switches over to covenant talk. I'll make my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee. She's a Jew. She's in covenant with God. She's a covenant child. She's got a covenant right. I said, she's got a covenant right. And he says, oh, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham. Let's here we go again. Whom Satan hath bound. Yeah. Lo, these, I'm sorry, 18, not 50. 18 years. Two things there. One, covenant right. God's the healer. We got a covenant with the healer. Satan's the oppressor. We've got a right to healing by our covenant with God. Whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from her infirmity on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> and he heals her. I don't know what the next verse says. I can't remember right off. He's getting there. <clears throat> oh, wow. You got somewhere else, didn't you? Praise the Lord. Here, here we, it just keeps getting clearer and clearer. Satan oppresses, God heals. And if you're in covenant with God, you got a right to the healing. If you're born again, you got, you're a child of Abraham. Go with me, if you will, to the book of Galatians. Uh, was it Galatians? Come on now, Eddie. He says, not the seeds as one, but as many. I, I'm in the wrong book, aren't I? Help me out, somebody. No. It's, it's, chapter, it's, it's a book, that, it's, it's chapter. Here we go, Galatians 3. 16, and then 29. I looked at verse 28. That's why I got in trouble. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. All right? Well, that's to the Jews. Hold on. Hold your britches. Amen? You better hold on to your drawers. Amen? He saith not to seeds, plural, as of many, and to thy seed, which is Christ. The promise of God, the blessing of Abraham, was made to the promised seed of Christ. Not seeds as of many, multiple, but one, which is Christ. So here you go. We're, we're going to kill the argument. It's for the Jews only again. Because when you get to verse 29, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, possessive, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. So the promises made to Abraham are mine. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. Little uh, Mink. Lynn Mink. I want to say Glenn Mink. That way I said, that's not Glenn Mink. Mint Lynn Mink. You know, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. <laughs> so fine. If you've never heard that, it's a, it's a great song. You'll get in your head. You can't get away from it. Which is way better than don't let the corona get on you. <laughs> Ain't it, Shannon? I called her up. Yeah, she hates that song. By Deacon uh, Otis Wicknine. He came out back in 2020 right as corona came out with don't let the corona get on you. It's hilarious. 
And so Shannon hates that. And I called her up yesterday. Say, hey, Shannon, how you doing, honey? Have you heard what the CDC is recommending? I got her. She said, what? What are they doing now? I said, you're not going to believe it. They are recommended that you don't let the corona get on you. And she went, Daddy! I have honorary moments every once in a while. Hallelujah. She, and, and so, because I know it gets her head, she can't get it out for the rest of the day. She probably laid down last night, because she could hear, well, don't let the corona get on you. Or she might get a text, and it'll come up and go like, uh, you got to do the best you can, make sure you wash your hands. That's one of the, that's one of the lines. You got to do the best you can, make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> I've even sent audio text over to her. Well, she has no idea what I'm sending. And then once it's out, it's out too late. Now, sorry. <laughs> I said that because Lynn Meeks, I'm going to get in your head too. Praise the Lord, which is a better one. We have this woman who's the daughter of Abraham. She's a covenant relationship child of Abraham, has a right to healing from the oppression of Satan. And the Bible says that we have a new covenant established upon better promises. Hallelujah. The old covenant did pass away, but a new one took its place. Now, it's, it's better because it, it includes all the blessings of the old and then some. Amen. We cannot keep following theological uh, stupidity because people don't believe in miracles. And they don't believe in healing. And they don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit because it doesn't fit their narrative when God's all the while. God, I'm telling you, God is doing things all over the place. But you got people who reject it. They don't want to be like them Pentecostals. Yeah. You know, that holy rollers. They roll out the front door of the churches. I grew up Pentecostal. I ain't never seen anybody roll out the front door of the church. And I've never seen anybody hanging from the chandeliers. Where they used to say that. And they would take Pentecostals back in the day, back in the early 1900s. They would literally tar and feather them and run them out of town. Yeah. Because people were, were just migrating to the places where God was healing and delivering and setting people free, and, get, and they were getting their lives completely transformed, and they couldn't have that and mess up their establishment. Jesus is the healer. He came to heal the sick, to set the captives free, to establish the kingdom of God. Amen? I, I know you've heard it. The name it and claim it. The grab it, the, the blab it and grab it. Bunch. Go ahead and call me what you want to call me. Um, amen. We're going to get people healed. We're going to get them delivered. We're going to get them born again. We're going to get them prospering. Hallelujah. We're going to get them walking in the light as he's in the light. Amen. I said amen. And you, know, you can call me a name it, name it, claim it, and frame it, or a blab it and grab it. You want to. I don't really care. Call me what you want to call me. But I've seen too many miracles. I've had too many people get healed. I've had too many lives transformed by the power of God. I've seen it too much. Hallelujah. And so you can say what you want to say. I've watched it happen. We got testimony after testimony after, sitting in this church of the power of God. Hello. My kids learned faith. And Shannon's alive because of faith. She was in Tulsa. I couldn't even be. We weren't even there. We were in North Carolina. And God raised her up before I could have even gotten out there on an airplane. I mean, praise the Lord, because they knew what to do. Amen. They knew how to believe God. Amen. They knew how to speak the word of God. And they got in there, and they got a hold of the word, and they put it out there, praise God. Amen. And got out there, and Dr. Dean said, well, we don't even know what to tell you what's wrong with you. Yeah. And we went from, you know, she's got spinal meningitis or something, she's in big, big trouble, to a few hours later, they sent her home, we don't even know what's wrong with you. 
Well, she won't sit. Give me a break. <laughs> and Shannon don't hide it. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Let's just back up on the right then. Boy, I mean, you know it. Shannon don't hide it. <laughs> yep. See, the family's going to preach. Yeah, they know it. They know it. They all know it. But the doctors, could, they couldn't tell her what was happening, what was wrong with her, and why she was better. See, people come along and say things like, uh, you know, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, you know why he waited to the fourth day? Because the Jews' belief was that the spirit left the body after the third day, and they weren't really dead until the third, the fourth day. That's why he waited on purpose until the fourth day. So they couldn't go. He wasn't really dead. They believed the spirit stayed in the body for three days. <laughs> so he said, I'll do them up one. Go day four. Lazarus come forth. That's a miracle. Why? Because he was there day four. God's cool. You know, why are you waiting? You know, you know, he's sick, you know. Lazarus isn't dead, he's asleep. What? Four days. He's I mean, he's he stinketh. Give him a bath. Go come on out, Lazarus. <laughs> so we have to we have to understand Jesus is the healer. You are a covenant child of God. You're a son or daughter of Abraham. David Eagles. I'm of the seed of Abraham, and his blessings rest on me. I'm of the seed of Abraham. I'm not moved by what I see. Jesus was made a surety. That's what I believe. He's the seed of Abraham, and his, I gotta, and his seed remains in me. I can't take it up. I gotta go down like five octaves. <laughs> Hello? Still didn't do it right. But anyway. I got more bus to run there. Sorry for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You as a child of Abraham. What makes me a child of Abraham? You're in Christ. And he's the seed. And the promise was made to the seed. Hallelujah. You're in covenant relationship with God. And you have a right to Jehovah Rapha because of your covenant relationship from all the oppression of the devil because of your covenant relationship. Now, we rejoice in healing anointings of ministers. But they work, they, they work and they'll work with people and, and do all kinds of things. But you have a right to it. See, a lot of times anointing will make up where people don't have any faith. But you have a right to it. Now, add that to the, the anointing. Boy, you got, you, got a, you got a double whammy going on there. You have the right to the healing provision of Jehovah Rapha as a child of God as, and being in covenant relationship with him. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we said last week that we're going to pray for the sick. So is there anybody here that needs hands laid on you for us to minister to you? Glory to God. Well, come on. Bring it on up. Come on, Joe. Get them going. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Come on. Now, Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow uh, them that believe. Thank you. Hallelujah. In my name. Thank God for the name. Everybody say, thank God for the name. God. What's the power in? What's the authority in? The name. The name. Amen. Um, they'll, they'll speak with new tongues. They'll cast out devils. If they drink any other thing, it shall not harm them. They, sh um, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, the word shall 
is the strongest assertion in the English language. You can add a bunch of adjectives to it trying to make it, but shall is it will be this it will be done. It will be done. Amen? They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, one way, like Brother Hagin, one way God heals is through the laying on of hands. Now, you can receive by your own faith. You could, you know, you could, you could be in a, a meeting where the power of God is just flowing, just sit there in your seat and get healed. The way of administering healing is through the laying on of hands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so he said, they'll lay hands on the sick. If you're up here, there's something wrong with you. You're, you're stating I'm in that position. I'm, I'm a candidate. Amen. To say I'm a candidate for healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when hands are laid on you, the healing power of God is going to flow into you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that you shall recover. You shall recover. Don't have your faith in me. Have your faith in the fact that God said you shall recover. Amen. And receive at that moment his healing virtue and power. And your covenant right to be made whole. Your covenant right to be made whole. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these dear saints who come today and we thank you that Jesus is the healer and that healing has been made available to the body of Christ through a covenant relationship and we thank you Father that you commissioned us to go in the world and to lay hands on the sick and see them recover so in accordance with that command Father I lay hands on these in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I lay my hands on them in accordance with the law of contact and transmission, my, the contact of my hand on their head, the healing power of God flowing into them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, making her every whit whole in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. I lay hands on them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, that from the top of her head to the soles of your feet, her feet, the anointing of God flows into her and makes her every whit whole in accordance with your word. And thank you, Father, she is healed in Jesus' name. Be made in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be made whole and receive that healing anointing in your body now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. In the last stuntaba, in the Radaraba Sitaba, Grata Sutra da Viscova, and the Sitra da Be made whole in the name of Jesus, be made whole in the name of Jesus, be made whole, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, 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 Penny. Glory to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God says they took handkerchiefs and aprons from Paul's body and they were sent and it was laid on the sick and those possessed with devils, the spirits came out of them and they were made whole. We lay hands on these calls right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you that your healing, anointing, and virtue flows into that. And just like uh, with Paul, it's laid on the sick, they'll be made whole, the evil spirits will go out of them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. And we lay hands on my brother in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say be made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We thank you, Father God, that he is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Hallelujah. Before we, before we quit change or change directions. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Are you coming up here? Okay. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We owe Satapa et Tepekete. Yeah, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Be made whole. Glory to God. Loosed, loosed, loosed. And made whole. In Jesus' name. You're loosed. 
from your bond in Jesus' name. You're loosed from your bond in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How, that's what they said about what Jesus said about the woman. You're loosed from your bond. Nathan's loosed from his bond. Hallelujah. Made whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of, oh, Rafa Satara Now, Father, we give you the glory for all that's wrought in our midst. Jesus is the healer. Say, Jesus is the healer. Say, Father, we honor you and thank you. For all that's been done in our midst, all the glory, all the praise, all the honor be unto the almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Now, some of you, if you, I don't know what kind of churches you all all been in, but you say, well, somebody fell down. Well, you know, the Bible talks about in the uh, Old Testament how the priest could not stand by reason of the glory. See, the anointing of God can overcome, overwhelm your physical body. Then in one place, uh, they, were, they were bowed down, and the power of God hit them and stood them up. Hallelujah. Marie Woodworth Edder back in the 20s was preaching and, and, and having miracle services and stuff. And she just right in the middle of a sentence stopped and for three days stood there. She went in a coma. People came from hundreds of miles away to see this event. And when she came out, she picked up from the mid word she had been preaching and finished her sermon. Back in Azusa Street, people would be coming to go to the meeting, and they, they thought the building was on fire. And it wasn't the building was on fire. The glory of God was on it. They would call the fire department to put the fire out, and they get there. It wasn't a fire. It was, the, it was just the glory of God. Well, I don't believe that. That's your problem. Didn't you, didn't you hear Yoda? Don't try. Do. Do or do not. Don't try. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to receive the Lord's table this morning. It's first Sunday of the month. What we ask you to do, if you will, um, is there enough room for everybody to make across the front? Okay. We need the first people, row people come up here and leave enough room between you and the platform for them to come by. And then the, um, the next group to stay in the second row. Yeah. Fill in the second group once the front's filled up, and so they can get by and serve you communion. Hallelujah. So come on up. We're going to receive the Lord's table. Who can receive the Lord's table? Any believer. So y'all come on up here. I'm leaving just enough room right here where they can walk right by you. Hallelujah. And then when we get done with that, um, we'll see where we put, we'll see about next the next group. Hallelujah. And y'all fill in on the... Uh, is there enough room to fill on the first, the front row, or? Okay, fill in on the first row, so they get, so they get behind the first row of people here, and go to y'all here. Glory to God, Amen. God is good, man. That's nice. We got a service. We can pray for the sick. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, Paul wrote the, the letters to the church at Corneth. They were not hunkadory letters. Both of them, and I'm probably all four of them, there's, there's real strong um, internal evidence there were at least four letters to the church at Corneth. Um, he makes reference to other letters in between letters. And so... There, there, there is a real belief that there was a letter before first and a letter after first. So we have first that we'd have, we would have had if they found them, first, second, third, and fourth Corinthians. Um, however, <clears throat> we only got two of them. Amen? But he was corrective. They, loved, they, they were excited about the things of God, but they were fruitcakes. <laughs> they were the charismatics of their day, the charismaniacs. Okay, 
I mean, they all tried to speak in tongues. They all tried to prophesy. When I saw that all at once in the church service, I was trying to give a, word, a, a message in tongues to get interpreted and to prophesy and to have all the gifts flowing all together at one time. And somebody, I mean, it, it was just, it was mayhem. Like that guy from Allstate on the commercial. It was spiritual mayhem. And so Paul wrote corrective letters. Amen. And um, they were coming to church and getting drunk. Having love feasts and getting drunk at church. It wasn't, it didn't go over real good. As a matter of fact, I mean, he, he's sending this letter to straighten them out. He said, when you come together into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone has uh, taketh before other his own supper. One is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? I love Paul. Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. That's how, that's how Paul did. I love the way he wrote. You think I ought to commend you for this? No way, Jose. Shall we continue in sin so that grace should abound? God forbid. Paul asks stupid questions that answers them. You dummy. Amen. Galatians 3, Phillips. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. He says this. He goes on and says, um, where was I? For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered to you. That the, night, the, the Lord Jesus, the same night when she was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Thank you, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, or new covenant. Uh, do ye often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, he who eateth this bread and drinketh this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he did and eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, uh, not discerning the Lord's body. For this calls many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That's key, Jimmy, or dead. Or dead. Okay? Yeah. When judged, we're chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen? So when we come together, let us uh, come together and tarry one for another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. And if you come not together unto condemnation, the rest I will set in order when I he felt like this was so important he had to address it. I, mean, I got a bunch more stuff to deal with you guys about, but this has got to be done right now. When we don't eat, and drink, how do we drink and eat unworthily? We don't recognize. See, now growing up Pentecostal, we were all sitting in the aisles doing this. Lord, forgive me all my sins. Whatever I did that I don't know about, forgive me of it. I don't want to eat and drink unworthily because I don't want to be dead. <laughs> then you took it. You, know, you made make sure you got it all straight. He said not discerning the Lord's body. That's how you eat unworthily. You're not recognizing what it is. By his stripes, we are healed. We are not discerning what this is all about. It's a covenant meal between us and God, recognizing that he healed our body, he forgave us of our sin, and covered us in his blood. So when we rightly discern the body, we're not weak, we're not sickly, and we live a long life. Amen. So he took the bread, break it, said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together. Healing belongs to us in Jesus' name. The Jews would have four chalices at the table, one for Abraham, one for Isaac, one for Jacob, and one turned upside down with the belief that Messiah would come, take the chalice, turn it over, fill it with, fill it with wine, grape juice. More wine is grape juice or fermented. But it's used both ways. And declare him Messiah. The Bible does not say he took a cup, he took the cup. He took Messiah's cup and said, drink this in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us drink in covenant relationship with God. We are healed we are kept, amen, 
by the blood of Jesus, healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have a covenant with God in Jesus' name. So what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You don't have to. Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Yes, yes, amen. It's the blood. I said, it's the blood. It's our covenant relationship with God. Healing belongs to us. Because we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And all you watching out there right now, we just speak to you and command help and healing to come on your bodies from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us again Wednesday night here at Expedition Church and then next Sunday at 1030, this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Until then, be blessed of God and remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See you next time here at Expedition Church. Live, in person, and online. God bless you. See you then. Hallelujah. You're dismissed.